Hi, everyone. My name is Jason Erdreich. I am a STEM educator here teamed up with Autodesk for the Autodesk Design and Make webinar series for educators. And I'm beyond excited to be joined today by NFL quarterback Josh Dobbs. Josh, how are you today? Man, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Glad to be on today and, and talk about my story and my love and passion for STEM and education as well. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Well, again, super glad that you're here. I figured we could just start by if you could tell us a little bit more about how you actually became involved with Autodesk. Yeah, so I started working and teaming up with Autodesk back actually in the fall while I was still um, in my stint in Arizona. And obviously, with the nature of a lot of research and education going on in Arizona, there's a lot of extreme environments out there. And due to my background with NASA and as um, the aerospace community is pushing to go put humans back on the moon, eventually Mars. Um, it was a great opportunity just to talk about how important it is for our youth and the next generation to really invest and start brainstorming of how humans can survive in extreme environments. Um, so it's been great to be able to work with Autodesk, share my story, and also continue to empower the next generation uh, continue to, to continue to grow the aerospace community and their research as we attempt to do what um, humans have not been able to do in the history of human civilization and consistently have humans in space on the moon and eventually on Mars. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's so cool. I mean, I think, again, with your experience, with your background, which we'll talk a little bit more about in this interview, uh, you're in a fantastic position to, of course, support this movement and inspire, you know, future STEM experts and engineers. Um, I think what we're describing, too, is the Make It Resilient contest, uh, where students are, are challenged to do just that design, uh, you know, extreme weather or extreme terrain kind of habitats and things. And, you know, what's about that contest specifically that Make It Resilient contests interests you and, and do you find exciting? No, I just I just think that the youth is so creative, right? And um, as we look into the future and accomplishing the goals that a lot of the commercial companies want to accomplish, as well as NASA, who's really spearheading the charge, you know, that creativity from our youth, from the future generation of engineers and STEM advocates or what's going to make these dreams really come to life. So I think competitions like this, just starting to stir the pot, you know, get those creative juices flowing. Um, and really allow perspective not only to current engineers that are currently working on those habitats where humans will be living, living on the moon and Mars, but also it gives the future engineers, you know, a head start, a leg up on the competition with their creativity so that once they are the engineers and the astronauts and the scientists in those jobs, um, they've already been working on um, the future opportunities to inhabit the moon as well as other planets. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I couldn't agree more. And I think you just touched upon it a little bit. But in addition to getting this kind of leg up, as you described, um, why else do you think students should consider entering this contest, the Make It Resilient contest? No, I think it it really one um, competition really breeds excellence. I've learned that in the sports world, that in competitive environments and competitions is where you really kind of see what you're made of as you stack up against the rest of other students across the country. So I think that's one, right? And then two, um, I think, it, you know, it just provides just an opportunity for us to see the potential with our young engineers out there. Um, there's, as I said, there's uh, a wealth of creativity within the youth and um, to see them really bring that creativity to life, I think um, will be a joy for all of us current engineers who um, are trying to empower the next generation. So uh, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword of why they should join, man. I'm excited to see what all of the applicants and, and uh, contestants, um, what they have to show in the competition. Yeah, absolutely. Likewise. And, you know, I'm personally curious about this. I'm sure many of the people who are watching this will be curious as well as to what inspired you to study aerospace engineering. Man, um, it's always been a passion of mine. I would say my first passion began in the aviation world. Um, as many of us who love STEM and love Air, aviation aerospace you know I was that kid at four or five years four or five six years old that just wanted to travel so that we could get on a plane so I could watch planes take off and land and get to the airport early to study them and just fascinated with what makes planes fly right that's kind of where my interest began when I was younger I also was blessed with an opportunity to visit Kennedy Space Center in the peak of the shuttle era I know uh, some of our young contestants might not even know what the shuttle looks like, but um, I was able to visit 
the Kennedy Space Center as they were still sending four or five shuttles to the International Space Station in the early 2000s. And I think a combination of those interests, as well as recognizing that math and science were my two strong suits, are what really kind of put me on the track to study aerospace engineering. So when I finished high school and I was headed off to college, uh, my my biggest point of emphasis was that I went to attend a university that gave me the opportunity to play sports at the highest level, but even more importantly, study aerospace engineering, because I knew that was a huge passion of mine. And um, it's really cool now to reap the benefits of that passion, that interest that I had when I was younger, and now seeing the other side of the coin and being able to apply those concepts in the things that I do off the field as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And and now, obviously, with your profession, I'm curious, how has your experience in aerospace engineering and those studies and those passions impacted your success in professional football? A lot, a lot. The habits that it takes, man, to, to do any engineering, anything really in the STEM world, and then on top of that, at a different layer of difficulty with it being aerospace engineering. Um, it takes a lot of discipline, um, a lot of mental fortitude, um, and a lot of you know patience in order to work through the concepts and understanding and application of everything that you're learning in the classroom and putting it into the real world. So there's a lot of correlation. I would say the biggest way I see the crossover though is, you know, as an engineer, you learn how to be the ultimate critical thinker. When you arrive on a college campus or even um, as kids are getting started younger now in high school, you're taking engineering classes. And the biggest thing that they're doing is they're giving you real life problems. They're giving you um, a certain subset of equations and formulas to try to solve those problems. And you're tasked to go out and figure out the problem and then apply what you learn to the next problem to continue to build upon those building blocks. And as a quarterback, man, that's exactly what I do every single day. You know, the defenses that I play, um, they're presenting various problems, such as their schemes, blitzes, their tendencies. And I have a tool belt of solutions, whether it's through audibles, uh, play calls, adjustments that I can make in order to put my offense in the best situation while to attack those defenses. So it's critical thinking at the highest level. Now, of course, when you play football, you got a 40 second play clock. So it puts a little more extra pressure on you. Um, but Outside of that, man, like I think the process, uh, processing a lot of information, um, going through that mental gymnastics each time, each time you have to answer a question in the classroom, as well as each play that you have on the field are what the biggest correlation is between the engineering world and the athletic world. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, I personally, I never thought about that problem solving, critical thinking, that speed connection, you know, with, as you mentioned, whether it's equations or whatever it might be yeah. in the engineering world, to then transfer that to sports. That, that's fantastic. Pattern, pattern recognition, right? Like um, sure. a lot of times in the engineering world, there's things that you see out there. Um, they might be in different subsets of engineering, right? But the patterns repeat themselves. And that's the same thing on the football field. So I think that it's really like being able to, um, have a lot of information thrown at you, figure out what the critical information is that's going to allow you to be able to simply solve a complex problem and then repeat process are really the biggest crossovers, right? Like engineering isn't, you know, for the faint of heart. It's difficult. It's There's difficult questions, especially in the world that we live in as we're really trying to push the envelope on what we can do as human beings with our resources that we have here on earth. Like the the applications and the questions that we are trying to solve are difficult um, and it's the same thing in the football world you know 40 second play clock and you have 100 different defensive defenses that you're trying to cipher through to see what they're doing and how to go out and attack them in order to win a game against the best athletes in the world you know it's the same difficulty of problems and so it's really cool to see the crossover between the mental game uh, between the engineering world and playing quarterback as well Right. I agree. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, on on back into the engineering world and kind of working with these top engineers and top minds, what did you find most surprising when when you spent that time with NASA that you mentioned earlier? Yeah, the coolest thing was that a lot of the stuff that NASA is doing and uh, especially in the world of instrumentation in the world of, you know, actually building things, innovating um, items like, you know, most of the times when you're interacting with a commercial company or in school, you know, you're just learning about what 
these different type of instrumentation do, what a string gauge does, what a gas spectrometer does, right? You're just learning about it. But when you go to NASA, like you're learning from the people that invented those instrumentations or those rovers, yeah. right? You're learning from the actual source. And I thought that was the coolest thing that really put it into perspective. You know, I remember I was working on the Artemis One mobile launcher. And uh, a big part of it is uh, a gas spectrometer that they have to monitor uh, the rocket while they're fueling it up for launch. And obviously, you're dealing with very sensitive elements um, when you're talking about propulsion of a, of a rocket. And I remember I was talking to a guy and he was explaining to me what a gas spectrometer was. And we got to end of the conversation. I asked him, like, man, like, how long have you been working here? Like, how do you know this thing in and out? And he's like, well, you know, about 40 years ago, I created a gas spectrometer <laughs> back on the initial uh, Apollo missions to go to the moon. I thought like that was what was really cool about being at NASA, like the true innovation that you see and you're learning from the people that are at the head of the line and the best in the world at truly innovating and creating new technology in order to propel us into the future, man. That was what really put things into perspective during my time at NASA. That is that is amazing. That is amazing. Now, we have a lot of students who are going to see this, uh, who have probably very similar passions and things to what you and I have shared so far. So um, what advice do you have for students who are interested in getting involved in these STEM topics and, and STEM fields? Man, the biggest thing, the biggest advice I have is, you know, to be curious, you know, be as curious as you can. There's tremendous opportunities and in internships to get real life experience that NASA also offers, as well as a ton of the commercial companies that are bursting onto the scene as well. So be curious in you know, speaking with the people around you, but also doing your own research within NASA or Boeing or SpaceX, Blue Origin, ULA. There's a ton of commercial companies as well that are providing opportunities for the future engineers and innovators to be a part of what they're doing right now. And so to any student out there that is doing extremely well in school and wants to figure out how they can apply what they're learning in the classroom to the real real world right now and start getting that real life um, application, man. I say like, be as curious as you can, do as much research as you can, reach out to as many people as you can, do a great job of putting yourself out there right now so that you're creating the connections, seeing those opportunities that are gonna be out there so that when it comes time to graduate and make that transition into the real world, you've already done your research and you know exactly how you want to make an impact um, on the industry moving forward. And if you do that, man, you can hit the ground running. And really, man, like there is no limit for the impact that you can have on the STEM world. Very cool. And I think that actually goes along with what you were saying earlier about one of the reasons why to do the Make It Resilient contest too, is you know, getting getting your your feet into this space and and trying to engage with some of these professionals and show what you can do, right? That's that's awesome. Um now, 100%. Yeah. Now, as a teacher, I, I taught STEM for many years, and I found that a lot of my students who were really interested in STEM struggled to balance their passions in maybe STEM fields and also their passions in athletics, playing sports. Yeah. Being a team. Uh, you've obviously managed to do both. Uh, what specific you know advice or, or, or challenges do you think uh, you know could kind of aid <laughs> experiencing that right now? Now, I feel like the biggest thing that I see around is people suffering from burnout. Right where. You have goals, you have high aspirations, whether it's in STEM, whether it's in athletics, whether it's in music, the arts, whether it's in all of them at the same time, you have high goals that you're working toward each and every day, but you feel burnt out along your journey to achieve those goals. And the biggest thing that I learned from my journey is like, it's really easy to get burnt out, especially when you're looking to the finish line. Like, I remember times of my freshman, sophomore year, where I felt like I was kind of looking ahead to that graduation day. And then I was seeing... I had 120 more hours of school just to get there. And then now I'm looking at the classes and the classes are thermodynamics, astronautics, propulsion, aerodynamics, airplane performance, some difficult classes to get through. And I'm just a sophomore in college. And, and what I realized is, you know, I was so focused on that end goal and obtaining that diploma that I really wasn't maximizing my time, like actually learning in the classroom actually trying to get better on the football field. And I was looking so far ahead that it kind of gave me that sense of feeling overwhelmed. And so my biggest advice for those of us that go through those feelings of burnout, uh, feeling overwhelmed with what we're trying to accomplish is just like focus on the journey, focus on each step along the way. 
And I think if you do that, then you're able to maximize each opportunity that's thrown your way, whether it's something in the classroom, whether it's in your interests outside of the classroom, and truly enjoy the moments, right? Enjoy what I learned is to enjoy, you know, staying in the library to 2 a.m., you know, enjoy waking up early and uh, getting ready ahead of time for football, cl- for football. Enjoy some of the sleepless nights, you know, trying to turn in the engineering uh, report. Also enjoy the times where you're ahead of the game. You get a chance to sleep in. You get a chance to study ahead. You get a chance to pour more into your interests outside the classroom. Embrace the journey. And when you do that, the end of it, and you'll respect yourself so much more, you'll feel better about the journey, and you'll still accomplish everything that you wanted to accomplish along the way. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. I love that. Uh, you know, enjoying the journey is, I think, so incredibly important. It's something that's easy to forget, too, right? Um, 100%, right? Yeah. Now, something I'd really love to learn more about, uh, and then I'm hoping you could share, is telling us about the extraordinary Dobbs Foundation. Uh, yes. What it aims to do. And, you know, it's very similar to the opportunities that Autodesk is offering to our next generation. As you guys know, a huge passion of mine is STEM, um, as well as ath- athletics. And the biggest thing I want to do is exactly what I just said, you know, empower the next generation to achieve their goals and dreams, no matter how unique their journey is. Like, I obviously, I want to empower uh, those of us and those young engineers out there that want to get into the STEM world through opportunities that we offer at the Extraordinary Dobbs Foundation. We're very excited to take a group of Girls Inc. Um, ladies from Knoxville over to the Rocket Center in Huntsville uh, this summer and, you know, just give them that perspective of, hey, here's you know, the evolution of the space and rocket industry. Um, Here's what NASA is doing now. Here's some current people that are going through space camp that are trying to become the future astronauts of this generation. And here's what it looks like. And so that's the biggest thing that we want to do. We want to bridge the gap and show the opportunities and show things that are possible within the STEM world. And as I said, man, it's growing like a weed. Um, I think personal aviation is a huge growing industry right now. Um, as well as obviously space with what NASA is doing with their Artemis mission. We all know how Elon Musk and SpaceX continue to push the envelope. Boeing just recently um, satisfied their commercial contract is now sending astronauts to the International Space Station. Uh, Blue Origin is bursting on the scene. Like There's tremendous opportunities out there. And a part of the Extraordinary Dollars Foundation, we want to provide that perspective to the future engineers and STEM students of what the future looks like for them and what those opportunities are. So through trips, through grant giving, through um, community building opportunities, that's what we do. And it's been a tremendous journey thus far. We're just three years into our um, long-term mission, man. And we want to impact as many students as we can along the way. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, thank you for those efforts. And of course, for sharing that, I think that's going to benefit so many future engineers who you know, in turn, are going to benefit all of us, right, with their their creative ideas and their curiosity. Um, with, without a doubt. Yeah. Without, I mean, the, the, those young engineers are the future. And so um, for us current engineers, there's also a call to other people that are thriving right now in the engineering world, like find ways to bring along the next generation, find ways to continue to offer, offer opportunities to them. Um, because we want to be in the position that we are in right now if there wasn't an opportunity offered to us by an older gender, older engineer along the way. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Well, thank you. And listen, we've talked about so many amazing things already. Uh, I do have one more question. It's a challenging one. Um, okay. Which is more challenging to launch, a football or a spacecraft? More challenging to launch, a football or a spacecraft? I'll have to give the edge to a spacecraft, right? You know, we got gravity, we have a ton of elements and um, chemicals we're trying to mix to um, curate the proper propellant to launch a very heavy rocket up into space. But launching a football is no small task. And there's some really good athletes on the other side of the field that also get paid a lot of money to stop you from throwing the ball or when you throw it to try to catch it before your own team catches it. So um, launching a football is no small task. There's only 96 professional quarterbacks in the world. And I think that people sometimes forget that. That kind of puts things into perspective. So they both take a lot of the same um, thought process, team building, communication, right, um, to accomplish both difficult tasks. But launching a spacecraft is a little more difficult. Right, right. Well, everyone who's uh, watching this, you heard it from the expert himself. 
Mr. Josh Dobbs. And uh, Josh, again, I just want to thank you so much for joining me today and, and joining the entire Autodesk community to share these amazing insights towards your expertise in both professional football and aerospace engineering and all the efforts that you're doing through the Extraordinary Dodd Foundation and also, of course, the Make It Resilient contest. So thank you again for taking the time with us today. I appreciate y'all. Thank you guys for listening to my story. I'm looking forward to seeing all of our contestants in the Make It Resilient competition, and I'll see you guys next time. Awesome. Thank you.